Howdy all you delicious people, I'm here to review a movie called FX. This movie was really fun, I really enjoyed it. It was great. It was great. This movie really did remind me of like the Mark Wahlberg shooter film, like almost kind of shot for shot, it's very similar that way. But you have a character that is to be put into this position where he doesn't absolutely need to go on and take this offer that is presented to him. But he goes on to then take it and then realize that afterwards what a huge mistake this all was. And he is to have put not only himself at risk, but the people he is to either love or befriend. And that ends up just kind of winding into an interesting hour and 44 some odd minute adventure. And really it was something that I enjoyed. It was really a fun thromp. Um, There's a lot of times where it got on to give me like unexpected moments and that was also kind of really interesting uh, for a film that you weren't thinking was going to have, like these shocks or surprises or whatever. But then also how it just kind of begins. You're just kind of like, what is going on? But then you're like, oh, okay, all right, I got you. All right. Uh, you just kind of wanted to give me that shock of the, or the thrill of the, the opening. But so... Really kind of just setting this up more. So we have Roland, who is to be this special effects artist. And he is to come to find that this producer is actually working for the Justice Department. And we have Roland talking to a character named Lipton, who is to have this offer of this kind of... Uh, acted or false assassination and that goes on to of course lead Rollins just be like well like you know what like like I don't think I can go on and and really want to put that together that seems like a lot of risk for like for the the possible reward of it all and come to find out the assassination that we are to have assumed thought was to be faked was actually to have been real but then also we eventually find our character uh, to be running for his life from really just realizing that this guy could have said no. He could have said no. But so, like, trying to be as, as vague as, as much as possible... But yeah, um, there are, to have me need to also say, like, this movie was great, but it's fairly slow. There's a lot of stuff that they just kind of throw at you, and it's kind of really fun. And really, this movie does have a sequel, but supposedly from what I heard from the sequel, the, the sequel wasn't that well. I'm like, well, yeah, like. Like, if this sequel would have done Bananas, then they would have just been like, man, we gotta just keep popping off these FX movies. But I think, like, really the whole, like, success of the first one was really just a, a shock to the point of, like, well, hey, now we have to do another one of these. Like, how are we gonna keep kind of going at this and approaching this? And, like, that's where it just kind of much more easily falls apart. But so... Really, yeah, like, so, from what all I've just kind of said here, and tried to, like, 
go on and kind of word this to uh, to really just give my opinion. I had a fun time. It was it was a good journey uh, for this film. Uh, so with that said, I think I'm just going to go on and just kind of push to really just wanting to go into full on spoilers. I feel that there is just a lot of like short brief scenes in this movie that I don't think I'm going to go on and really care to really go into spoilers about or even remember. Like there is like a whole scene where you just have Lipton who comes in to identify the body and walks off from like, okay, what was kind of the point of this whole scene? Like we really had to kind of at some points in this movie, take some time to just kind of set up characters or to just kind of do stuff that probably could have really just been edited out of the film, especially with its hour and 44 minute runtime. But so really, I would say just either way, like, uh, like still like you're enjoying this film nonetheless. Like I feel like uh, the the Mark Wahlberg movie shooter is just kind of a slow build, but like there are just certain kind of chunks of just kind of certain lines in that movie where you kind of pull away from uh, just kind of having fun remembering. Uh, and whatever, what have you. But so, like, really, this is just kind of a pitch of two movies rather than just the one. Like, if you've never seen the Mark Wahlberg shooter film, check that out, too. Uh, that's also just a, a really fun adventure. But so, with that said, I think it's about that time to just go into that double five time territory and go into spoilers. And really, with that said, I think I'm just going to double five this bad boy up and we'll just go into pausing this so I can get out the cast list. And we'll go into spoiler time, spoiler time. It's about that time we can spoil this movie. Alright. But then I also realized that this movie is available on HBO Max right now. But you can also check out the app. Zelophonic. Z-E-L-I-V-O-N-I-C. And be able to watch FX for absolutely free. There probably could be a number of other apps. That you can probably go on and check out this uh, thing also, uh, like if eventually you are to also download some APKs of certain things, you could watch probably a lot more. Uh, but also, like, uh, there's to be apps like Manic, M A N N I C. Uh, but then also, like, APKs you could uh, probably download on a Google search, uh, like Yes Movies. Or I think there's like a HDO box, something like that. Uh, you can go on and also uh, download via Google a APK thing and be able to watch a number of things for absolutely free. But so, with that said, let's go on into spoilers of this whole ordeal and talk about every little nitty gritty scene. From whatever I can remember within my brain... Or kind of looking at the cast list, have it just come back to me in a flood or, or wave or whatever. But so, in the very beginning of this movie, we all of a sudden have this guy coming in from off of this car and making his way into this restaurant. And he used to all of a sudden go on and start wiping out this whole entire restaurant after we come to find that his woman is to be dining with some other man at this restaurant. And so we have this character, Ellen, that is to be pleading for her life against this man named Harry and is to end up getting shut up for it. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? How is this all unfolding within my eyes? And then I realized that the director is to go on and yell, cut, and this is to all just be a scene from some film. Like, oh, okay, all right, so, like, clever. And so, we come to find that the woman has gotten up, who is to have gotten shot, and is to find out that she has this whole kind of protective vest on, and is to have Rollins just kind of uh, undoing all of her 
makeup as she is to go on and have this be her final scene of today. And Ron, it seems, is to need to go on and just kind of do coverage of other scenes. And so, in the meantime, we have Lipton coming in. And he ends up going on to talk to Roland. It's like, well, hey, yeah, like, I'm a producer. And I've kind of seen uh, some of your uh, your stuff in passing. And really, like, I'm uh, kind of intrigued of uh, using you in a future project. Not exactly saying what this project actually entails. Just kind of keeping it very close to the vest. Because there are other people around them. Uh, but then also... Uh, Lipton is to just kind of be curious if Roland is to go on and be busy because Lipton can kind of turn to some other person. So Roland is to go on and just be like, well, hey, here's my card. Uh, like, meet me at my studio tomorrow and we'll kind of talk this out. So Roland goes on to be with this woman, betting her and, and whatever. And the following day we have Ellen who is to kind of uh, kind of get up and kind of get everything ready and kind of get going on to her next job. And so Roland is to be in his underwear, noticing that Lipton is to make his way to his studio. It's like, well, hey, man, here's the keys. Make your way up here so I can scare the crap out of you. So Lipton makes his way to this door. And he needs to all of a sudden notice this big, massive monster presented in front of him. And Roland is to just be like, well, yeah, like I use this monster to kind of scare burglars. And so Lipton is to just be kind of very, like, upset at Roland. But then it's to also just be like, well, hey, whatever. Like, this guy just has his quirks, right? But then all of a sudden, further Lipton is to be surrounded by this kind of treasure trove of all of these supposed movie props from all of these films. And he is to go on and rattle off the names of them all, uh, knowing this whole history of this character, which I thought was just kind of like, okay, this is rather brilliant. This is rather smart. Plus also, like, every bit of this was just to make me think, like, Man, if we can go on and just kind of reboot this movie today, more than likely it would probably have a com probably a completely different title, or maybe I'd hope that they keep the title, or just call it FX and just not have the weird slash in between the F and the X. Uh, but anyways, so we have Lipton going on and also just kind of just rattling off all these treasures. And not even mentioning the movie posters he used to have in the background. Because the two movies of which that I noticed, I was like, oh my god, like, that's Fade to Black. I'd seen Fade to Black. And other than the weird uh, kind of uh, Marilyn Monroe fascination that that main character has, it's kind of weird and creepy. Uh, and just kind of like the opening part of this film, where we have the, the character and his weird... Uh, thing that's kind of going on with his relative or whoever he is to kind of uh, be forced with. We have the character have a really interesting uh, kind of concept going on within that film. Uh, regardless of how like well received it is, it's still a pretty interesting film. If you haven't gone on and checked out Fade to Black or my review on it, uh, go ahead and check that out. But then there is also a film, I think that was just called Zombie. Or Zombies? Zombie. I think it's Zombie. And I was like, oh my god, like, I remember seeing the the photo of that from the, the movie Warm Bodies. Or the, not the photo, the, the Blu-ray or DVD disc of that movie. And I'm like, oh my god, like, the world is just kind of telling me that I need to see this film. Even though it may or may not be that good, I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I really need to go on and eventually check that out. But so, Lipton goes on to talk to Roland and is to finally just kind of like, well, hey, man, like, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, 
I'm not this producer that you are to go on and have me think that I am. I'm really actually just working with the, the Justice Department or the Justice System. I'm going to go with Justice Department because that makes more sense in my brain. So Roland goes on to state that the, the main reason why he is to be here is to help out a mob uh, boss-like character who is to uh, kind of seek out retirement and is to be Nicholas DeFranco, which really, like, probably should not have gone on and even said the name of who this guy is that he wants Roland uh, to be a part of this whole thing with. But I guess, like... Like, if he's, like, a hugely named mob boss-ish, like, character, like, I guess it does make sense for Roland to be aware of who this is, so, like, he will agree or not agree to the, the terms of this whole offer. But so, Roland goes on and is to just be like, well, hey, like, like, what is the, the time frame that you're thinking of me, like, putting off pulling uh pulling this all off and so lipton is to go on and just be like well yeah like if you want to decide to do this offer you're gonna have like a week from now to plan this whole false assassination or uh a kind of prepared uh kind of play if you will of a assassination that is to be supposedly all of fake blood and, and this and that. So, Roland is to go on of like, a week? No, like, that seems like very rushed. And so, Roland is just like, no. And so, Lipton is just like, well, okay, like, we have another offer of another person we can turn to. So, like, if anything, like, kind of just think it over. So, Roland ends up going on to Lipton's office and is uh, kind of chatting away with also Colonel Mason, who, of course, I go on. And I remember him from the, the Pauly Shore movie Son-in-Law because the entire time that this guy was talking in this movie, I'm like, where do I know him from? And then I was like, oh, my God, he's the he's the grandpa from Son-in-Law. I'm like, all right, like figure that out. So I'm like, I don't remember this. I don't remember this guy. Um, but I finally figured out where I remembered him from. But so, Roland ends up going on to talk to Colonel Mason. It's like, well, hey, like, give me 24 hours and I'll make up my mind. So Roland ends up, uh, again, betting his, his, his love, Ellen, and... By four in the morning, he is to go on and make all these calls and agree to all this. And is to go late at night to meet with his associate, Andy, to get this case from her. And then ties her legs together. I don't know, like that scene was just kind of like, okay, what is going on there? But then I realized that he's like, oh, he's getting a makeup case from her to be able to do the job that he needs to pull off. Like, I didn't get what was going on in that, that whole situation at first, but then I had to kind of uh, figure it out in my brain. So, Roland then goes on and is to be making this prosthetic. That is to go and be applied upon uh, DeFranco's face. And really when kind of watching this whole scene, I'm like, this very much reminds me of the, the show Face Off. But then I'm also, not the movie Face Off, the John Travolta Nicolas Cage movie, no. Like there was a sci-fi show called Face Off where they would go on to... Uh, need to make these like costumes for this show and we would have these judges that are kind of critiquing all these monstrous makeups and then eliminating people by the end of it 
And it wasn't for some movie or some show project. It was just for the sake of doing costumes and whatever for this face-off show. But so... We have Roland who... We come to find is to make this plan as Lifton is to make his way to his studio and is to like put a gun on Lipton and Lipton is whip his gun out and just be like what the heck are you doing and Roland is to go on and kind of shoot up this monster and have this kind of blood splatter and Roland presents the transmitter and receiver kind of devices that he used to have upon both his body and the body of the, the monster. And just to showcase, like, well, yeah, like, here's how we're going to go on. And we're going to present this whole uh, death scene within these devices and this gun and, and have to go on and, uh, like shoot these buttons perfectly or shoot these buttons perfectly, shoot the parts of the body perfectly to like have this all work out. And so Rollins is to go on and apply this makeup on DeFranco and realize he has a pacemaker. And so Rollins is like, oh, sh like, well, didn't know that about this guy. Like, this may be a factor for the receiver transmitter that I'm going to go on and, and try to, like, place upon him because there might be some kind of wave or some kind of voltage that is to be t between these two things. And you got a guy with the pacemaker. Ooh, this is probably going to go south. But so. Roland goes on to. Turn on this machine. Of this receiver transmitter thing. And it seems that this guy does not go on and die. So it's like, okay, thumbs up. Like, we can kind of put on this whole scenario. So, DeFranco goes and just kind of eats his kind of normal dinner with his makeup applied upon his face. And Roland turns around and is to be forced by Lipton and Colonel Mason to need to be the guy that is to assassinate uh, DeFranco here because we have both Lipton and Colonel Mason who want to make absolutely sure that they are to have the right man for the job and to hope that nothing else goes uh, wrong and if this is to be run the most smoothly that really has to be Roland who's pulling the trigger in this whole scenario. So Roland is just to be like, man, like, these guys are putting a lot on me. And we come to find out, it's like, well, yeah, like, they're going to put a lot on him so they can pin him for all of this. So, Roland goes on to make his way to this dinner and is to make his way to DeFranco's table. And the both of them kind of look at one another and they nod and if I was to be anybody at this kind of establishment, I would have just been like, well, yeah, it looks like they're really nodding at one another. But so, Roland goes on to start firing away, and everybody's like, oh my god! And we have DeFranco, who's kind of, uh, kind of moving around and eventually falling over. So, Roland is like, okay, I did it. Like, I'm, I'm out. And... We have Lipton, who is in a car waiting for Roland. 
so that way Roland can kind of run out of here because otherwise he has he has his FX car that when Roland kind of runs off to get to it is to be towed away and we come to find that that whole towing away thing at the uh, kind of playing in the later part of this film. But so Roland is to be running out to this getaway car thinking that Lipton or Lipton uh, is to have like, hey man, you did great. Like this will all blow over. And speaking of blow, <laughs> we come to find out that someone's gonna get blown away here. As Lipton is to have plastic uh, within the back seats, and Roland is to notice that, and is to be like, well, hey, why is there plastic in the back seats? And Lipton is like, well, of course, because I didn't want to leave a residue, as I am to go on and shoot you. Because Lipton had gone on to turn against Roland. And so Roland and Lipton are kind of struggling for this gun. And they shoot the driver of this car. And so now that gives Roland the opportunity of kind of running away here. And making it back to his FX vehicle. Who of course is to be getting towed away here. So... Roland runs off to his lady at her place and so Roland is to realize like like his world is over <laughs> Roland at one point is to go on and and so right after Roland is to kind of struggle with the gun with Lipton he then is to make a call to uh to Colonel Mason and is telling him exactly where he's going to be and that Lipton had turned on him and come to find out when Mason is to send a, a, a kind of a, a police vehicle over to the location of where uh, Roland is supposedly be at this uh, this phone booth. We have a drive-by shooting occur within this police car, and Mason or Mason Roland is to realize that like he is to of course not be in this phone booth because someone else had gone on to make a phone call and he was just kind of waiting hoping that the this police car would be his saving grace but then instead it would be a bullet that he is to of course dodge and he's to be like oh my god like these police officers were gonna were gonna come and kill me so i need to run off to make his way back to ellen to explain to Ellen what all had happened to him, and now he's just kind of uh, really risking his life here, even being with Ellen. So, Rowan, who of course I'm sure is exhausted from running around all night, but then also is to just be clearly exhausted from like the whole like stress and panic of this all, and is to seek comfort with Ellen, because realizing that he's probably going to be dead soon. Ellen is to go and just talk to Rollin and just be like, well, hey, how about we just kind of run to the press? Like, I, I think that, like, anybody in your situation, like, when he probably has no one to turn to, like, turn to the press. And so, we have Rollin who's like, well, you know what, like, maybe that's a good idea. Like, I don't know. And so... As soon as we go on to have Ellen, who is to be kind of just opening up the, this window and kind of getting ready for her day, a window breaks and Ellen falls to the ground and she's now dead. Roland goes on to try to 
figure out what had happened to Ellen, but then it's to also realize that there is to be a shooter within some location that he is to possibly go on and need a kind of mirror to reflect off of uh, the outside to just kind of look around to see where the shooter is to be possibly located as the shooter is to go on and uh, make his way to the location that, of course, uh, Roland is now B. So we have this character who is to, I think, be William Adams. And so he is to have been the, the Schuster. And we have Roland who is to kind of beforehand realize that there's going to be at some point this shooter coming. So Roland decides that he's going to take Ellen's body and put it in this bed and then just kind of hide in this spot to wait for this assassin to just kind of come in as this door is kind of being unlocked anyways. So this assassin Adams is to make his way into this place to then be kind of possumed uh, by Roland, who is just kind of hiding on in a, in a high ground location that is to have all of these kind of little baskets and, and whatever of these just kind of oddball items for Roland to just come flying out and to just kind of catch this guy off guard and to kind of just spring into taking this guy down. So Roland ends up getting the gun away from this assassin to then try to use the gun on the assassin himself to then just kind of have this real struggle going on and eventually have a Roland getting kind of thrusted against this oven that bizarrely is to have at some points it being on and it almost like I wonder like what they were trying to go with there or what they were going to try to play with there but uh, really it's all for naught. So, eventually Roland figures out a way to just kind of combat this assassin and kind of tie his arms and knock him out. But so, this assassin gets back up and they start fighting again. So, Roland is to try to go on and ask this assassination, like, Who are you working for? Like, who sent you? Why are you here? When? <laughs> and so, Roland is to go on and ask this que these questions to, of course, get no answer. To the point of Roland just deciding to just beat this guy to death because he had killed the one he had loved. So, we have Roland who, after this whole situation, is to maybe call the cops anonymously or maybe not. But either way, a Roland is to leave and... And we have the police uh, make their way there with, of course, Leo, who is to be Brian uh, Denny here. And in all, in all honesty, Brian, like, what a great actor. Especially when he ends up getting called uh, at his place that is to have just kind of food all over the place. And he lives alone and he's getting called uh, by his partner, uh, Mickey, and it's like, hey, man, I got a case for you. Like, two bodies, cold. So, Leo makes his way to this this apartment, and immediately he's kind of assessing the scene and realizing that the dead bodies are had been moved. And so Leo is just like, well, hey, man, like, why aren't the bodies like presented like where they were and it's like well hey like you were taking too long i didn't know like i didn't really know if uh like you were gonna be here or not so leo was just like like eh, all right so ellen was of course to be kind of sprawl on the bed and we have leo who's just like well hey like how did she get there but then also, 
the detectives end up finding Adams there also. So, so Leo is assessing the situation and immediately he's like, you know what? There's something fishy about this this whole situation immediately. So, Leo ends up going to this kind of assistant character who's leaving for Jamaica and is leaving with uh, some possible person by her side. And so Leo is to come to find out that this assassin a character or this person that is to be with Ellen is to be this police officer. And he's just kind of like, Weirded out by that, he's like, police officer? That doesn't sound right. Because Leo is to have, like, three possible suspects of two of which who've been a, I think, a producer and an actor who had already gone on and had, like, some alibis. But then the third is to, of course, be Roland, who is to be her current uh, person who is to have dated her. Because the two others had gone on to prior date her, but again, alibis. So, but Leo is just like, but that detective, though. Like, why is he involved in this? So... Leo goes on to, again, uh, be with this this woman who is to go on to... Let me pause here for a second. To eventually assess with this woman, it's like, okay, there's something fishy about this guy being involved in the... the, the Justice Department... But then also, um, the more and more that they start to look at it into this movie, and I'm not doing this, of course, uh, with the exact way of flow of how this movie goes, but then they all of a sudden start to realize within, like, Adams, but then also other people within the same kind of department or division that all of them have these kind of fake social security numbers because all the numbers are the exact same, which makes it out to be that they're all phonies. But so, Leo goes on and is to, like, want to figure out about this Justice Department and realize that the whole head of it is to be uh, Colonel Mason. So, Leo goes on to specifically talk to Colonel Mason about this Adams character and is to ask about, like, his like last projects and Colonel Mason is to try to go on and swerve away any real connection to this guy and is to just kind of have Leo just kind of like well I, like I don't think I can really buy anything that this Mason character is saying like something is just kind of fishy about this whole situation so Leo is just kind of presented with this whole just kind of unrest. And so Roland is in desperation mode to eventually call his friend Andy to hope that she can give him this, uh, this makeup kit. So that way he can disguise himself. So he can be able to kind of go around town a lot more freely. And so. And Roland is to come to call Andy. And Andy is to make her way to this kind of boat museum. Or this place is, that is to kind of sell these small boats. Roland goes on and notice that Andy is to have a kind of guy tailing her and so Roland 
is to just be like, well, hey, like this guy is tailing you. Like, how about you go on? You give him this boat to kind of distract him and I'll come in and I'll tackle him down. And that's exactly, of course, what he goes on and does. So Andy goes and, and speaks to this kind of large suited man, which, of course, I remember him most from the last action hero movie and also i think the 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 manhunter film which was kind of the the unremade uh, red dragon movie the original thing so roland goes on tackles this guy has him fall into the water for both roland and andy to then be running off and andy's like what the heck is all going on here and Roland is to say, it's like, well, hey, like, I'm running from these guys, like, Ellen is dead, and, like, all of a sudden we just start to see Ellen just start to cry here, or Ellen, Andy, start to cry. So, we have Roland... And Andy just kind of left in this kind of underground. And Roland eventually is to open his case full of makeup and is to eventually come to this disguise. This long hair and this beard. And both him and Andy are kind of to switch clothes with these hobos in order to find this kind of underground opening uh, to be able to kind of get away from the area of which that they are to be at as Roland is to come up with another plan to get even with the people who are to be uh, kind of forcing, forcing him on the run and so, because we have Ron who kind of has, like, nowhere to turn. So, he's just going to be like, well, okay, like, I'll go on and, like, I'll, uh, I'll get even with these people by the end of this story, this tale. So, Leo goes on to be frustrated with his, uh, with his boss, Lieutenant Murdoch. And is to mention how he's like, hey, like I wanted that DeFranco case, but instead you handed it off to Lipton. And eventually, by the time that Leo is to eventually start to learn that Colin Mason and, and both Lipton are kind of these dirty cops, he then turns to. Uh, Lieutenant Murdoch here and is to want to know the address of Colonel Mason because of course here's where we get the whole like social security cards that are all to be phony and is to really just kind of turn to Mason to just be this much more shady character than we originally assumed uh, as far as Leo's point of view is concerned. So Leo goes on to then have his superiors kind of be aware of his behavior as he is to kind of grab his lieutenant. And just like, you need to tell me where this Mason character is. And like forcing his hands on this lieutenant to then go on and have his captain kind of pull him in. And just be like, well, hey, man, I want your gun and I want your badge. Like from here on out, you're suspended. But that, of course, leaves Leo to just be like, well, I'm going to take my captain's badge and his gun, and I'm still going to go on and do this case regardless, because now that he knows where this Mason character is, he just wants to finish this case, assuming that this is probably going to be the last case he ever goes on and does. So, we also come to find out that Leo is to have called Mason's place and we come to find that DeFranco 
grabs the phone and ends up answering. And Leo's like, aha, so DeFranco wasn't dead. Like that body that Lipton had signed off as it being DeFranco was not. It's like, all right, so like this guy is still walking around, assuredly paying off the whole Department of Justice, bribing them and forcing them onto his side. So, Ron is to go on and find out that both Franco and Mason are to be at this one place. So, he desperately needs to go on and needs to get his FX van. So, him and Andy are to go on and kind of sneak into this... Uh, this kind of towway kind of parking lot location or this uh, whatever it is to be called uh, where, uh, oh, this impound. So we have Leo telling Mickey that he needs to go on and he needs to just kind of sit on that car and just kind of uh, and watch it to see if somebody comes back for it. And of course, Roland does. And so, Roland has Andy kind of put out all of these kind of fireworks and whatever to kind of distract these people working at this impound so he can uh, kind of tear away uh, with his vehicle. And Mickey is kind of with his, with his vehicle, of course, chasing after uh, Roland. So, we now I have this big, huge chase scene, which leads to having Roland use a bunch of his equipment at his, his disposal. He has this kind of this slip, this this big container of this oil and whatever to have Andy kind of drop here. And we also go on to have this kind of dummy or this kind of mannequin being tossed out to also kind of stop Mickey's car. So Roland ends up, of course, getting away and then he ends up taking Andy and separating himself from her and drives off. So Andy's like, well, hey, like, these people don't go on and kill you. Like, I'm going to go on and kill you. So Roland gets away and makes his way to both Mason and DeFranco's place. And so he goes on to start sneaking into this locate, locale and we have Mason that kind of sends all of his goons out. And the very first goon is to be like kind of presented in front of him this weird balloon we had this goon that kind of pulls at this balloon and ends up blowing up in this guy's face and so Roland ends up going like aha like the guy fell for it so Roland ends up starting to sneak around in this house to then have these doors kind of via this button that Roland has like opening and closing so Mason sends, like, his two other goons out to just kind of, like, okay, like, figure out where this guy is in this house. DeFranco and Mason are kind of just stuck in this one room together, and, and DeFranco is like, well, hey, I'm not playing around. So he gets this, 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 this gun. He's like, all right, like, if anything happens, I have this gun. So, Roland ends up, uh kind of forwarding these two other goons by setting up this whole mirror and by the time that he kind of separates the goons into these two separate locations and he ends up having this like this mirror that where the one guy ends up shooting through the mirror ends up killing the other guy 
and then Roland turns around and like hits a, hits the other guy with a pipe. So after that, he gets to go on and take out both the goons. So of course, we now realize that okay, DeFranco and Mason are the only to be the two that are left. So because Roland is to go on and kind of play around. Uh, with the electricity, which he has going on to like electrocute one of the guys in the gate before he enters his home, and the lights flicker, and Mason and DeFranco realize like okay somebody's here, and so Mason sends the goons out, and like I'm really kind of. Uh, pedaling back a lot, but then kind of coming back into it. So, but I'm trying to like get every little nook and cranny piece or whatever that I can remember from this film. There's so much going on. But so, but just to kind of wrap this up in a neat little bow. But so, Roland goes on to now be with the, the two the two Mason and DeFranco who are to the only ones left. So DeFranco goes on to run to this one, I think door or window that is to electrify him. And we come to find out that because he is to have this pacemaker, it is to really just kind of do him in. But then before he dies, he ends up giving this key to Mason. And this key is to be this kind of key that has this like tons and tons of money. Kind of Fort Knox just kind of stored away bizarrely. And so... DeFranco gives this key, this key to Mason. And... Mason is to go on... And be having this to be a bargaining chip to Roland when he enters. And Roland is to just be like, uh huh, sure, yeah, I'll take your key. And so Roland is to make it assume or make us assume that. He is willing to take this bargain with Mason to go on and have Mason turn around and just be like, aha, like I got this gun from you that you just left, like you moron. And we have the whole kind of diehard moment where Bruce Willis is to turn to uh the the clay character and just be like oh no bullets uh and so Roland is to just point out like hey man like there isn't any bullets in this gun and the gun is super good to your hands so good luck with all these police surrounding this place you needing to run out there and tell them what had happened because they're gonna shoot you dead because you can't uh you can't not not hold this gun in your hands. So, Mason, of course, goes out, like, of course, rolling this estate, and is to go on and say that all of this is just a big mistake, to then have him get shot down by all these men, because, of course, he cannot not be holding on to this gun. Kind of very poetic justice there, being shot by the men that he is to have worked side by side with. So, Mason is to be dead, and so Roland is to be playing dead here, as he has already gone on and, and tried to do so, when DeFranco was to have possibly shot up the place, when Roland was to have come nearby, and played dead, and both DeFranco and, and Mason had decided it's like, okay, like we can get out of here, we can run off, and then DeFranco ends up getting electrocuted. 
So we had Leo and we had all these cops because Leo had made his way to this place and then had called this other cop in to just kind of uh, make a perimeter around this whole place. But Roland is going to do all the heavy lifting to kill this, kill all these men off. But so... Leo and all the other cops are there kind of uh, looking at all the aftermath and assessing that Rollins is dead, even though he isn't. He is to have all of the these extra skin on his neck and his arm to be, I guess, so thick that no one could really kind of touch for a pulse. So Roland ends up going to this hospital and to this morgue and he ends up escaping said morgue and like so much about this also kind of felt like the first born identity movie for some bizarro reason. But so Roland ends up escaping from this hospital to then just get bumped right into Leo, who was expecting him there the whole entire time, just being like, well, hey, man, like, like, let's, let's bargain. Like, how about you bribe me? Because I'm going to go on and I'm going to retire. And I'm assuming out of that whole situation, like, you came to finding, like, some way of, of, uh, that whole key thing that is going to be the, the big money thing at the end of all this, where they're going to turn around and have Roland pretend to be DeFranco and get this whole huge money reward at the end of all this for them to just kind of just drive off into the sunset. So, that said, that's like in a very quick way that does kind of play out this whole movie. And I do apologize for like, Kind of going back to certain scenes when really I could have just kind of continued to mow down and and just kind of finish up this film. But it felt like there are certain pieces where I'm like, you know what, like, I feel like I would probably need to go and re-explain past scenes to kind of get into the more current things. Because I didn't go on and explain this movie all that well, I feel. But then also when looking back at it, I'm sure there's going to be 30 different scenes that I probably should have gone on and, and stated. Um, but I feel good enough. I feel good enough. But so uh, I feel good about what all I kind of said here. I, I felt that I remembered a lot more than I probably thought I was going to. So with that said, I think it's about that time to just kind of wrap this movie up. That said, uh, I apologize also for the number of times that I had to probably pause here. There are certain times where there's either like a certain noise in the background that I was kind of uh, af afraid of because uh, there were certain times where, of course, my cat is consistently meowing all the time now. Uh, so, yeah, like really that is to uh, be one thing that I was kind of just like, oh, crap. <laughs> so with that said, um, I'm hoping to go on and eventually review the Sylvester Stallone movie Cobra. So I hope to be putting that out soon. Other than that, hopefully uh, tune in for more just randomly odd movies that at some point I'm going to go on and review or shows that I'm probably going to do only one episode review of. Uh, but yeah, uh, other than that, I'm just going to rush out of here so I can go on and just kind of upload this video and then also uh, hopefully be able to watch Cobra and be able to review it. I don't know. Uh, really, I've just been kind of lucky to be able to put out one review a day. Uh, but so with that said, goodbye, everybody. Bye, everybody.